Hurricane Milton is going to cause major problems for the state of Florida over the next few days, including life-threatening storm surge, hurricane force winds, and prolific rainfall. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down everything that you need to know about Hurricane Milton and why this could make a run at becoming a Category 4 or 5 hurricane over the next 48 hours. We are going to begin with what it looks like on the infrared imagery right now, and this is Hurricane Milton. It has really become a lot more organized over the last 24 hours as it continues to move very very slowly to the east but notice that spin here it is beginning to organize a lot more a lot more convection and there's also now an eye wall that has formed so that means rapid intensification is likely over the next 24 to 48 hours this is a closer view of hurricane milton this afternoon again notice that convection wrapping around the eye that is all just again going to intensify this over the next 24 hours as this continues to move to the east it's also going to become more ventilated which essentially means that we are going to have a better shot at rapid intensification as it gets closer to the Yucatan Peninsula. Now, the computer model data has been very interesting over the last 24 hours, and this right here is essentially the spaghetti models. What that basically means is we're looking at a bunch of different models on one graphic that indicate where the track of this hurricane could go. And over the next couple of days, everything is pretty much in line with just staying north of the Yucatan Peninsula, which means that this is going to stay over very warm waters in the Gulf of Mexico and in a very low shear environment, which means we are going to see rapid intensification. The question really is, where will this make landfall in Florida? And that's a question that a lot of people are asking. Obviously, the National Hurricane Center line that you see on that graphic shows it going right near Tampa. Again, there is a large cone of uncertainty for a reason. We'll show you more on that in a second. But essentially, this could make landfall anywhere from about the Big Bend of Florida and as far south as far southwestern Florida. It's a pretty large area still. Most models have shifted further south over the last 12 hours or so. And again, we're going to see this wiggle wobble effect a lot over the next 12 hours. So we could very easily see the shift again to the north. It could also shift south but many of the models have a consensus of landfall just to the south of tampa bay but that again could change so make sure that you are subscribed to the channel we're gonna have more videos like this over the next couple of days and we're also gonna go live tonight answering your questions so subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified when we go live this is the latest intensity guidance from a bunch of different computer models again there is a huge range but at this point we are expecting this to become at least a category three hurricane over the next 24 hours also i want to point out this is a hurricane this particular model guidance has it when it was a tropical storm so i just want to point that out but most of the computer models have this going anywhere from a category three to a category five intensity within the next 48 hours here's the good news about this when landfall happens it's going to be somewhere in here and we are expecting weakening by the time this gets closer to florida at least some level of weakening how much it weakens is a major question mark but there will be some dry air that feeds into the eye that essentially means we are going to start to see this weaken somewhat once it approaches Florida. Nonetheless, this is still expected to be near or at major hurricane status near Florida. There is a possibility this could make a run at a Category 5 hurricane as we go into Tuesday morning. And if that does happen, that would be happening just north of the Yucatan Peninsula before it gradually starts to decrease in intensity as it moves towards Florida. Now let's talk more about the intensity over the next few days and as well as the track. And then we'll talk more about the impacts. Beginning with a hurricane model. This is the HAFSB model. This is specifically built for hurricanes so this is a very helpful tool to use when we're looking at hurricanes so over the next 24 hours this is expected to continue to intensify in the southwestern gulf of mexico rapid intensification is expected during the day on monday notice how intense this hurricane gets right here is the yucatan peninsula and this right here is a category three to four hurricane approaching the yucatan peninsula the bad news is that this is not actually going to be interacting with any sort of wind shear and really not any dry air so it's going to be very, very healthy, meaning that we are expecting somewhere around a major hurricane here north of the Yucatan Peninsula. Now, this model, as we go into Tuesday morning, has us making a run at a Category 5 hurricane. This is very possible. It is a very small hurricane compared to what we had with Helene, meaning that it's not going to be nearly as hard for this thing to intensify, but it's also going to be easier for this thing to weaken once it gets closer to Florida or even over Florida. So I just kind of want to point that out. Smaller hurricanes tend to be able to intensify and weaken much faster than something 
something like Helene, which was very large a couple of weeks ago. As we go into Tuesday afternoon, this continues to move east. It basically will reach, I think, peak intensity sometime on Tuesday. As we go into Wednesday, that is when the question really starts to rise. Will this weaken before landfall? And if it does, how much will it weaken? We don't really know yet. It's too hard to determine that. That's why we're saying if you're in Florida, you should be preparing for a major hurricane no matter what at this point. This particular model has this weakening throughout the day Wednesday as it approaches Florida due to dry air that's going to siphon in from the south side. If that dry air is able to penetrate enough, this could weaken rather quickly. But if it's not able to really penetrate much, this could remain a pretty intense hurricane into the state of Florida. This particular model has it making landfall right over Tampa Bay as we go into late Wednesday night. And this would still be at least a Category 3 or at least a high-end Category 2, but if not a Category 3 hurricane. So we are still expecting a major hurricane to make landfall in Florida. This would drive right across Central Florida throughout the overnight hours Wednesday and eventually as we go into Thursday morning, this is an extra tropical system as it moves into the Atlantic Ocean. This is the HMON model, which is another hurricane model, and this one also has a peak intensity just north of the Yucatan Peninsula. And then as we go into Wednesday, it starts to move towards Florida. Notice how large the wind field is. This particular model also drives this into Tampa Bay, but again, notice how much weaker this is by Wednesday night. This one has it more at like a Category 2, even a high-end Category 1 intensity upon landfall. Here's the thing. I know we are saying that this is potentially going to weaken before landfall, but we don't know that for sure. So you need to make sure if you are in Florida that you are preparing for a major hurricane because it's very possible that this does something like Ian a couple years ago where it literally just continues to stay strong all the way until land, regardless of there being some wind shear and as well as dry air in the area. Now let's go through the impacts that we are going to see across Florida beginning with Monday into Tuesday. Really not much other than just some passing showers. As we go into Wednesday, that is when we are expecting landfall. The European model has us making landfall Wednesday night across areas near Tampa and Sarasota. Again, the track continues to shift back and forth, but it could still make landfall near the Big Bend or even as far south as Cape Coral. So keep that in mind. It's still a large range, but the European model has us making landfall near Tampa. That means as this continues to move towards land, we are going to see significant storm surge near and especially south of Tampa Bay as well. We could even see historic numbers. Upwards of 15 feet of storm surge would be a possibility in Tampa Bay if this is able to make landfall just around or just to the north of Tampa. Another thing I want to point, in, point out as well, if this does actually weaken a little bit before landfall, that means the storm surge is also going to broaden out more, which means that storm surge would actually have a larger field of impact across the west coast of Florida. So not good news there. As we go into Wednesday night into Thursday morning, this moves across central Florida before exiting as we go into Thursday morning. It will bring more storm surge to the east coast of Florida on Thursday with northeasterly and easterly winds impacting areas near Daytona Beach, Jacksonville, and as well as Palm Bay. In terms of rainfall accumulation, it's going to depend highly on where the track of this goes, but on the northern side of this hurricane is where the greatest rainfall is expected, so we could see some spots between 6 to 12 inches of rain easily across much of Florida, but some areas could even see over a foot of rainfall, maybe even up to 18 inches of rain in some isolated locations, but the vast majority of Florida will at least pick up somewhere between 3 to 6 inches of rain. In terms of wind, that's another big problem. We are going to be dealing with probably at least numerous to widespread power outages. Those will begin Wednesday afternoon back over near Tampa, Sarasota, and Cape Coral. They'll ramp up as this moves inland towards areas like Orlando, Daytona Beach, Palm Bay, Port St. Lucie, and even back up near Jacksonville. So be prepared for power outages. Have flashlights ready to go. Have all that stuff ready to go in case we do have power outages. Have your generator ready as well. And then as we go into Thursday, this eventually moves offshore before things calm down as we go into Friday. Here's another thing I want to point out. This is what we're looking at in terms of dry air filtering into the back side of this. So we're going to have plenty of dry air trying to filter into the south side of the eye as we go into Wednesday. And if this is able to kind of feed into the eye of this hurricane, it will help to weaken it a little bit. But again, we are still going to be dealing with major impacts no matter what for Florida. This is the latest National Hurricane Center cone for Florida and really just for this hurricane in general. Again, notice it's up to 80 mile per hour maximum sustained winds. It will become a major hurricane sometime tomorrow and then eventually it'll move towards Florida as a major hurricane and then eventually make landfall sometime during the day Wednesday, more than likely after lunchtime Wednesday, but we could still see an earlier landfall depending on the speed of this. And then as we go into Thursday, it will still remain a hurricane before eventually becoming an extra tropical system as we go into late Thursday and eventually into Friday. Another thing I want to point out, the cone of uncertainty is still very large. We could see landfall anywhere in this area, so do not just focus on the middle of this. Landfall could still happen further south or north, so make 
sure that you're keeping that in mind with your preparations. Thank you so much for watching. We're going to be live probably tonight, so subscribe to the channel. Click the bell icon down below so you're notified when we go live.